What's up everybody, Serenity here and today I'm bringing you my mute guide, so let's get into it. As per usual, I'm gonna start with the loadout, so we have the MP5K and the M59 shotgun. Now I run the MP5K, it's a very stable weapon that shoots really quickly, so it's great for headshots. I run the holo sight, but it's preference, every sight on this weapon would be good. I run the flash hider because the recoil of the flash hider and the recoil of the compensator is pretty much the same, and so obviously running the flash hider will help me shoot better at night. And it's also gonna help me to stay hidden when shooting through smoke grenades. And as per usual, no laser sight, because I don't Want to get spotted from it. You only have one pistol and that's the P226. It has horrible recoil but good damage and a lot of bullets. So it's gonna get the job done as long as you don't shoot too quickly. In the gadget category you have the nitro cell and the deployable shield. I would recommend to always go with the nitro cell and if you really need a deployable shield ask someone like Rook to take one for you. And to finish off the loadout you have medium speed and medium armor making Mute a very flexible operator. Mute's special ability is the jammers. You put them on the floor usually right next to a wall and then they jam everything that's wired less like breaching charges, fuses cluster charges, the drones and so on. They also jam Blitz's flash shield if he's sitting right on top of it. Most of the time you will use the jammers to jam reinforced walls. Now you need to know that there are multiple sizes of reinforced walls. There are the smaller ones and the bigger ones, the bigger ones being by far the most common. So on the big reinforcement walls you have to use one jammer per wall. Sometimes I see people put one jammer right in the middle thinking that it's going to jam both walls, but if the enemy thermite knows what he's doing he's gonna place to charge at the very end of the wall and he will be able to detonate it. On small reinforcement walls however, you can use one jammer to secure two walls. That's because they're small enough that even if thermite puts the charge at the very end of the wall, your jammer is still in range. Now I said that you'll mainly use the jammers to jam walls. The reason I don't use that many jammers to stop drones is because they can simply jump over them. That is obviously entirely dependent on how good the enemy team is. If you're playing against bad players, you can stop drones with only one jammer in alleys and if you're playing against good players it's not worth it as they'll simply jump over them. If you really want to stop them you'll have to put two jammers one in front of the other and that right there is a pretty big commitment to stop drones. I honestly would recommend to just shoot them but if you're playing on consoles it's a lot harder to shoot them so I would understand using two jammers to stop them. The best spot to stop drones with jammers are the drone tunnels because there's no way you can jump over them and also at the very top of stairs because the drone users won't see the jammer and so you have much higher chances of catching them. Now again it can be easily countered by good players as they can just jump on the ramp and then jump over your jammer. The lesson here is that if you're playing against good players, using jammers to stop their drone is pretty much a waste of time. The best way to stop a drone is to shoot it. Also think about it, it's not that big of a deal if they see the objective, they know where it is since they've checked all the other spots. So yeah, when you quote unquote hide an objective, the objective is not really hidden because you know by process of elimination everyone knows where it is. Also, I would not recommend using jammers on a wall you want Bandit to do the battery trick on, as they make so much noise that Bandit won't hear a thing, and so the enemy Thermite will place his charge, the enemy Thatcher will then throw a EMP grenade, and right after it goes off, Thermite will activate the breaching charge, giving no time for Bandit to stop it. It is actually very bad to put jammers where Bandit does the battery trick, because you're essentially giving a guaranteed breach to the attackers as long as they have a Thermite and a Thatcher. Now, if you are playing in casual or just lower ranked games, you can use jammers to stop the drones in the preparation phase. When the action phase starts, just go and kill all the jammed drones, take your jammers back and put them on the walls. If there is a castle barricade on a window close to you, it would be a good idea to put a jammer behind it as it will force the enemy team to either use an EMP grenade, the shock drone or they might even try to bash it 12 times. Now as soon as you hear someone bashing the window, simply blow them up with a nitro cell for a free kill. Oh and don't put a jammer behind a castle's door barricade, that never works cause you can just go prone and shoot it. So yeah, unless that's what you want them to do, stop wasting your jammers that way. Alright so that's it for the jammers, let's talk about Mute. Mute is one of the most flexible defending operator. He's a jack of all trade and master of none. He's a good defender because he has medium speed, medium armor and he also has a nitro cell so he can stop shields from pushing the sights. You can also roam with him if you have a very heavy roster because you have a passive special ability, you have medium mobility which gets the job done and you have a very flexible gun. When you think about the MP5 you think close range right? But in this game the gun is so stable you can even shoot long range with it. You just have to always aim for the head. A good player with an MP5 is basically headshot galore. The only thing I don't like about it is that you can't put an ACOG on it. I would love to put an ACOG on such a stable weapon but you know that's just not the case. The hollow side gets the job done though. The dot in the middle is very thin so you can shoot people at long range and it has okay vision on the side if you want to do CQB. So on and all Mute is very flexible and his role is to fill the gap in your team. He's actually very straightforward to play because the MP5 is very easy to learn and you can't really mess it up with Mute. You don't have a specific role. If 
you're a new player playing mute, as long as you're part of the big fight that's gonna happen, you're doing your job. So yeah, a lot of people ask me what's a good first operator, and I think mute is a good place to start since you'll touch all the playstyles in the book. Alright guys, I covered everything I wanted to talk about. So in conclusion, mute's role depends heavily on the enemy team's skill level. If they are newer players, you can use the jammers to stop drones, so you know, put them in drone tunnels, uh, under doors, etc. If you're playing against more experienced players, hiding the objective is not a realistic goal, so you should just shoot the drone instead of trying to jam them. You should still block key drone tunnels and put jammers under the doors, but don't make jamming drones your focus, because there's always going to be another way around. In the action phase, look at your team's lineup and fill the gap. If you need a roamer, go roam. If you need a defender, go and defend. Make sure to always go for headshots with the MP5K, and it should do wonders at any ranges. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I am now sponsored by Steam Crate, so if you're gonna buy from them, use the code Serenity17 and you'll get 10% off. And at the same time, you'll support me. The link is in the description. As per usual, thanks for the love and support recently. It's getting crazy, and trust me, it's only the beginning. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. A lot of people seem to think that shields are great at entering rooms packed full of enemies, but that's not entirely true. If you're playing against half-decent opponents, as soon as they will hear the shield, they will create crossfire, rendering shields completely useless. So, you know, like getting in a good position, flanking the enemy, getting the drop on them, that's the easy part. The hard part is to win those gunfights. However, unlike Jaeger, you do have the Nitro Cell giving you the ability to deal with shields, which is a big deal because since you have high mobility, you will get yourself in trouble a lot. Having the Nitro Cell will will save you from a lot of these bad situations.